Amen. I saw the light. The bright and shining light. It's good to be in the Lord's house tonight, isn't it? Appreciate you being here. We had a good day already. I appreciate uh, the good lunch that we had today. And for my birthday, it was good as always and plenty of food as always. And I appreciate all those of you that fixed and prepared and, and uh, brought food for the dinner today. And appreciate the good fellowship. Appreciate the generosity of the folk and the gifts and so forth. I just thank the Lord for you. So uh, let's just have a good time tonight. Amen. Um, the funeral arrangements for uh, Sister Teresa Hallbrook's dad, uh, his name, by the way, is Chester Story. Uh, a lot of times we just relate names of fathers of so-and-so. His name is Chester Story when you read the obituary. But the uh, funeral services are going to be held at the Greenlaw um, uh, Chapel. On Tuesday, they're going to receive friends from 1 o'clock to 2.45, and then the service will be at 3 o'clock Tuesday evening. So uh, keep that in mind, and I guess it may be in the paper tomorrow. If not, it will be. Well, it'll probably be in there tomorrow, maybe Tuesday. I'm not sure, but anyway. Uh, and then we'll put it out over the uh, email at the church and website so that those of you that have computers can pass the word along. And then the, Clifton, uh, the service for, for Clifton Richard. It's going to be on Thursday here at the church, and I know most of you don't know him, uh, but I just want you to be praying for the family. I know that uh, a lot of those people need the Lord, and you just pray that God will give us something that will say, something that will help them to see their need uh, and get ready and prepare for the day that all, all of us are going to face unless Jesus comes back. And I'm looking for him coming back. I don't want to go by the undertaker. I want to go by the uptaker. Amen. So you just pray the Lord's will be done in these services and pray for these families. And then, of course, our sick folk, Brother Sam, did go home today from the hospital. But keep him in your prayers. And Brother Mark Hallbrook's father, Franklin Hallbrook, is in the hospital. And then Lois Peace, we need to pray for her. She's the lady that had part of her leg amputated. And then Jerry Clevenger is in the hospital. He's in the coronary care unit at the hospital. So we need to keep him in our prayers. And then, of course, Brother Wolf, Brother Clarence. And uh, Sister Woodbury and Linda Johnson, pray for all those folk. And it would be good some of you just pick up and give these folk a phone call and just let them know you're thinking about them. I know sometimes it's hard to visit, but it would be good to give them a phone call and let them know we're thinking about them. If you can, that would be a blessing. Let's stand, if you would, please, and we'll go to the Lord in word of prayer. We'll ask God's blessings to be upon these requests and upon this service and pray that God's will be done concerning all these. And pray that the Lord just bless us. Brother Tim Worthy, would you pray for us, please? Remain standing, take a hymn book, turn to page 67. We'll sing the first, second, and last stanza at Calvary.
receive our offering tonight. Let's have the ushers to come forward. We've got several things we want to do tonight and follow the leadership of the Lord. We don't have to hurry, but uh, we want to be, uh, uh, just do what's pleasing unto the Lord tonight. And also we're going to be ob- observing the Lord's Supper and we're going to do that also. And, and then I'm going to preach to you for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then we're, we're going to have some singing tonight. And so we're looking for a good time. And somebody still thinks I can't do that, but I'm going to show you tonight. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's just ask the Lord to bless us tonight and give us a good time and bless this offering in a special way. Brother Jamie, would you pray for us? Granted, our Father, yes. Yes, granted, Jesus. Amen. All right. God bless you.
Appreciate Sister Linda and Helen for doing that for us. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to have a singing, an old-fashioned singing. You just enjoy it. We get about halfway through, we're going to stop, and then we're going to have uh, the Lord's Supper, the communion, and then we'll finish the singing, okay? And then after that, our pastor will preach if the Lord hadn't raptured us out. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to start off right now with uh, Diane and Ronnie. Jail. I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor, you come over, please. <laughs> yeah, you. Don't you the pastor? <laughs> no, I got nothing to do with this. Now, that was not my idea, believe it or not. Yeah. That's right. okay. Will you stand down here, please? I will. <laughs> Y'all yeah, believe it or not, that was not my idea. That was idea. her idea. No, no, don't blame it. <laughs> Play it, brother. If the pastor's had any, any in your life at all, come and tell you appreciate it. I dreamed my life was done And I stood before God's Son It was time to see What my reward would be With love He reviewed my life Count what was done for Christ For that is what will last eternally You see I've done my best to share That Jesus really He would save if they would just believe. Oh, but seldom did harvest come. So few did I see one until the Lord said, Turn around. The faces of the ones who come because of me. So many faces that my life had led to Calvary. All those years I thought nobody saw. I labored in lonely places That's when Jesus smiled And showed me all the faces He said, though you did not see the yield Faithful to plow the field And other times You helped me plant the seed No matter how small the task You did just as I asked Thanks to you, these souls have been set free. Then he 
showed me the faces of the ones who come because of me. So many faces that my life had led to Calvary. All those years I thought nobody saw as I labored in lowly places. That's when Jesus smiled and showed me all the faces. And for all those years you thought nobody saw as you lay lowly places. One day he'll smile and show you all the faces, the faces. You'll see their Well, we're doing things a little bit different tonight, and that was, I wasn't expecting that, but I do appreciate all of you, and you know that. And uh, we have a card of thanks here from Sister Dizzy and Brother Jimmy. It says, thank you so much for thinking of me and my family uh, through the passing of my brother. <clears throat> a big thanks to all of the ladies that prepared food and the beautiful flowers, but most of all for the prayers. What a blessing to have a church family uh, like all of you. Uh, all of you are etched in my heart, and may God bless all of you. Thanks again, Jimmy and Dizzy. So keep them in your prayers. Um, we're going to open the church doors. Does anybody want to get in? It's time to get in right now. So we're going to open the church doors. It's different. So if you want to join up to the church, just come right on up here and say, I want to be a member. Thank you. 
God. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? That's about 10 additions to the church we've had in about the last six weeks or so. And I thank the Lord for that. You know, there may be a few that'll, you know, fall by the wayside and go somewhere else, but God always sends them back in, sends us back in. And I thank the Lord for that. That's a blessing. Amen. All right. Now we'll have some, as far as I know, we'll have some seed. We may, something else may come up, but anyway. I appreciate that. Now, let me just say that uh, we're, we're not doing this. We're, we're not entertaining. We're worshiping the Lord. And we want to worship Him tonight through song, magnify His wonderful name. The most important thing is, is when we get in the Lord's work that we're serious about what we're doing for Him. And every time you get a chance and opportunity, you put everything you've got in it, in your heart, in serving the Lord Jesus Christ. To bring him honor. Amen. Amen. So God bless you. Okay, Brother Rick. Amen. The niece and company are going to sing next. While they're coming, let me say that I uh, appreciate those that have joined the church. And God bless you. And, you know, it's very biblical to be a local of a member of a local congregation. And we're glad that the Lord has led you guys this way. I want to say in reference to the pastor, it has been his birthday this week, this past Thursday. And, uh, my wife and I were talking this afternoon. Now, everything's said about a preacher, and you know, and it ain't always bad. But uh, I do want to say this: that he's a God called man. Everybody with a Bible under their arm that gets behind a pulpit is not a preacher. They choose that profession, as they call it, quote unquote. But I do want to say this, that behind every good pastor is a loving wife. Because if he's got 200 members, he's got 200 people that are under his care, plus the ones that come and visit, that God Almighty will hold him accountable for. The leading God and direct our lives. And preach the word, be an instant in season, out of season. In other words, when we like it and when we don't. But there's always that wife that sometimes is in the background that people don't notice. That is praying and carrying the same burden that he is carrying. So thank God for you, sister. God bless you. Well, Denise and company are going to sing and you pray for them as they sing. Shall wear 
The robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the star and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, come on down, come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down. Come on down, don't you want to go down? Oh, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the star and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Amen. Appreciate that. Brother Fox, you come on and sing for us. First of all, I want to thank God for saving my soul. And... I want, to, I want to pray for all my lost loved ones, the brothers and sisters in Christ. And I always pray for my pastor and his family. We need to, we need to, we, he needs our prayers bad. Because just like he said, he's got a big responsibility here. And I just thank God for him, and I thank God for leading me this way. Amen. Amen. I've not always been I once was so broken And battered by sin The story that I tell you Is such a marvelous thing How love brought together A beggar and king I traded for riches the rags of my soul. I gave him the pieces and he made me whole. I brought to him nothing. He gave me everything. Oh, he found a beggar. And I found the king, praise God. You say it's just so hard for you to believe. All I can tell you. Is that I agree Of all the love stories This world 
world has ever seen. There'll never be a greater how Jesus loves me. Trade for riches, the rags of my soul. I gave him the pieces and he made me whole. I brought to him nothing. He gave me everything. Oh, he found a baker and I found a king. Yes, I am that beggar, and He is my King. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Next we have Dalton and uh, Beth are going to come and sing for us. That song while they're coming, that song there says it all, doesn't it?
David and Frankie are going to sing for us next. Uh, before they sing, I, I appreciate Beth working with the young people. And what blesses my heart, I guess, about Brother Dalton is that he wants to sing. I don't know what the Lord has planned for his life. But it wouldn't hurt my feelings if God called him to preach. Amen. 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 God bless you, son. Y'all go ahead and sing. There's a roof up above me. I have a good place to sleep. There's food on Appreciate that, sister, brother. That song, my wife and I were kind of singing that song. We hadn't heard it in a long time at home, and I said, I need to find the music. That'd be a good choir song. And I tell you what, that's good any time. Amen. Going down the road or whatever. All right. Now we have the sisters singing. Sisters by Grace. Vesta, Diane, and Norma, please come. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, 
and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is his favorite song.
Diane, do you want this book? It isn't yours? Not mine either. Amen. I like that song, didn't you? Lord God, you, you hadn't had to pay a dime for this, and I hadn't either, because I'd be in a mess if I had to. I'd had to ask my wife for some money. Amen. I'm glad, Lord, that God, God doesn't have to have NASA well, now, to test this thing to see if it's going to work just right. Lord, God, you're talking about harpooning us up. We're going to be caught up. Amen. Just like the world was spoke into existence. When God said, in the beginning. Woo. Lord, God, that ought to make a Baptist shout. Amen. Glory to God, we're on our way out of here. Don't know when, but we're on our way out because we have the promise. Amen. Brother David. Uh, I've been feeling kind of poorly the last few days and all like that, and I've been out of my blood pressure medicine. Of course, I got it again, and my heart's going about 90 miles an hour, so y'all just bear with me on this song here. I thought I had died and gone to heaven. I stood just outside the And the man from within said, Have you been born again? Is your name written in the book of life? Please search the book again. I thought my name was there. I went to church on I never knelt in prayer Please search the book again It's too late now, I know Please search the book again Before you make me go I told him all the deeds That I had done The trophies I had won Then the man said to me Son, have you been set free? Is your name written in the book of life? Please search the book again I thought my name was there I went to church on Sunday, though I never knelt in prayer, please search the book again, it's too late now I know, please search the book again, before you Standing there I knew It was too late now for prayer Oh, my sinner friend If you will enter in Your name must be in the book of life Please search the book I thought my name was there I went to church on Sunday Though I never knelt in prayer Please search the book again It's too late now I know Please search the book again Before you
Amen. We're going to stop right here, and uh, we'll finish the singing a little bit later. It's time for our pastor to come, and uh, we're going to have the Lord's Supper and Communion. You come on, Pastor, and do as the Lord leads you. Amen. Let me just say that I enjoyed the song service thus far, and I appreciate our people. When they get up here and sing, I know how they're living. And um, I'm glad we're not in the entertainment business. And I realize that there's some groups out there that are in the entertainment business, and it's a livelihood for them. But I uh, appreciate people that have talents that they'll use to glorify our Lord. It's not the gong show either, by the way. We're not here to see who can do the best or, or who's the worst. We're just here to honor our Savior, the Lord Jesus. And give him the glory. I've always said, if you could take a tin tub and beat the bottom of it to glorify our Savior, I say, go to it. You say, preacher, would you uh, let somebody bring a tin tub in here and beat it if they want to be here for Jesus? I say, amen. We went up to Washington, D.C. not too many years ago. The the young people went up there, and there was a guy out there on the side of the street beating five-gallon buckets. Had them set up like drums. Sounded pretty doggone good to me. But he done good, and that trash can setting up, so he done good. So I'm saying, whatever glorifies your Savior. But you know what glorifies him more than anything? You live in a holy, dedicated, consecrated Christian life. I don't want nobody getting up singing to me, saying, oh, how I love Jesus, if they can't be faithful to the Lord's house. The blood never loses power, but yet they'll go out and live like the devil during the week. God just expects us to be holy, dedicated, consecrated, and separated people for his glory. We're going to observe the Lord's Supper tonight. This is a very, very important ordinance of the church. Only two ordinances in the church. One is the the Lord's Supper, and the other, by the way, is baptism. That's the only two ordinances given to the church. And we're going to read a portion of the scripture. You can turn your Bibles over to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. I tell you what, we need to get our men over on one side here or the other, uh, deacons and Brother Robert, you come. Uh, Brother Wolf, some of our deacons, one of our other deacons not here tonight and unable to come and be with us. So we'll have, uh, see, Brother Ryan, you come up and you've been ordained this. Land up over there, just sit over there and we read the scriptures and then we'll have you come up in just a moment. And let me say while the men taking their place that we do not observe a closed communion. If you're here tonight and you know that you're saved by the grace of God, you're welcome to take communion with us as a church. And uh, I would caution you this, mo- this evening, according to the scriptures, to make sure that everything's all right between you and the Lord. And you not take the Lord's Supper unworthily tonight. And I want you to caution your children also. Train them and let them know that this is not a refreshment. This is the Lord's Supper. So we're going to read verse 23 down through verse number 34 here concerning the Lord's Supper tonight in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. Verse 23 says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he had, was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do, in remembrance of me. And after the same matter also, he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let him, let, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak, weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. If we were to judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. 
Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come, come together to eat, tarry one another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that he may not, that ye may come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. That's reading the Lord's Supper account, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 down through verse number 34. Now, if you men will come, uh, tonight we're going to say the blessing over the Lord's Supper. We'll serve that to each um, uh, individual here tonight. As I said, if you're saved and you know the Lord is your Savior, whether you're a member of this church or not, you are invited to partake of the Lord's Supper. We're going to ask God's blessing to be upon the uh, Lord's Supper tonight. And I'll miss Brother Robert Thomas, if he would, if he'd pray for us. Brother Robert. Yes, thank you, Father. Yes. Grant it our Father. Yes. Amen. Amen.
verse number 24, the Bible says that when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Verse number 25, and after the same matter also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. And may the Lord add his blessings to the observance of his Lord's Supper. Thank you, man. God bless you. You go back to your seat. You gentlemen can come back. Now, Brother Rick, come, and uh, we'll have a few more songs, and, and then I will bring a short message so I don't get too excited. It's going to be lengthy, but I think every time you come to church, you ought to get a little word. Amen? We need all we can get. So you pray for the other singers that are going to come and sing for us. Sister Vesta, come on and sing for us. And then after she sings, Brother Edward, you come on. Um, we've had a lot of illness, and my brother's one of them. All of you have been praying for him for about a year now. But, you know, the preacher mentioned the other day um, about prayer, and it is the key. You know, we just have to keep praying, believing, and having faith. I may not ever see him what he once was until I get to heaven, but every time I go see him, he has a song in his heart, and I enjoy singing with him. And Wolf, if you're listening, this is for you too. This is a song we sang a while back, I Keep Praying. Um, don't listen to how I sing it, because I'm probably be crying during the singing, but just listen to the words. Beyond. 
I haven't sung this song in a long time, so uh, just pray for me. Impending storms just ahead I can see the dark clouds No way around it There is no way out There was danger all around me Surely I would drown to the force of His presence made the ways to lay down. He walked out on the water facing the wind. How it roared and it thundered till He raised His hand. Then the waves that were raging were suddenly calm. When he steps between me and the storm, the master said not a when he stepped out on the sea, but my heart was hearing clearly what he spoke to me. Be not afraid, it is I, I won't leave you all alone with my heart fixed on the Savior, I will no longer see the storm. And he walked out on the waters, facing the wind. How it roared and it thundered, till he The waves that were raging were suddenly calm when he steps between me and the storm, and when the waves of life are so high you can mount them then he steps between you and the storm the storm best I know that hasn't sung something in a long time and just sing it and just do a wonderful job. Sister Norma, you come on. While she's coming, let me do say this. Uh, welcome to our visitors that are here tonight. and uh, We appreciate you and hope that you have enjoyed the service thus far. We've all gone through a lot these past few weeks. <clears throat> but if you know the Lord, you know where your help is. You know who you can rely on. In Hebrews 4, 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly 
unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We need to claim that tonight. We don't have to go through it by ourselves. Sister Beth, you come on, and after that, the pastor will take over the service. Uh, let me say that those that are visiting, by no means at all, is just all the singers in the church. <laughs> There's a lot more. This church has been definitely blessed with talent, and uh, thank all of those tonight who have participated.
but his hand will be If that don't charge your battery, God bless you. You just need to get an altar, amen? I'm telling you, boy, that's something, isn't it? He's seen the need for me and you. The King of kings and Lord of lords left heaven for you and for me. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. We started the service at Calvary, singing, and then we just finished up with, oh, what a Savior. That ought to get you cranked ready for Monday morning, amen? I guess that's why the Apostle Paul said, therefore, my beloved, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, wherein as ye know that your labor is not in vain in Christ Jesus, Amen? Pastor, you come on. Close the service. The Lord leads you. Well, let's make some noise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. It's the quietest place you'll ever live. Yeah, let's make some noise. I'll tell you right now, if you was at the ball game and they run that across the marquee around the stadium, you'd be jumping up, hooping and hollering and doing all kind of stuff. You'd say, preacher, I ain't going to make no idiot out of myself. Well, just go ahead anyhow. I'm telling you, folk, we got a reason to make some noise tonight. Now, I'm not going to be able to preach all this tonight because I'm going to give you the highlights. And this is too good to pass up. I'm going to come back and get this another time when we got more time to make some noise. As the old black preacher said right up the street a few months ago, we got something to holler about, amen. We got one of our church members, our new church member. He told me, he said, preacher, you know what I like about this place? I said, what's that, young man? He said, I like it because it's loud. Hey man, you say preachers that in the Bible? You better bet you it is. Now, just figure of speak. We don't bet around here. I'm going to go through this quick, so you better listen quick. Psalms 98, verses four down through verse number six. The Bible says, "Make a joyful noise, whoopee!" Say preacher, I can't sing a lick. Well, I agree with some of you. <laughs> but it said, make a joyful noise. Unto the Lord, all the, all the earth, make a loud, what did it say? Loud. Didn't say just a joyful noise, but it said make a loud noise. 
When's the last time you made a loud noise for Jesus? When's the last time you really got plugged in and you felt the Holy Ghost of God all over you and you just let out a good, joyful, loud noise for His glory and for His honor? Now, I can't help what other people do when I feel like God's worked in their life. But the day that I went down and got that note out of the prayer garden that that young lady got saved and gave her heart and life to the to the Lord, I let out a joyful, loud noise. You say, where's she at, preacher? Ain't none of my business. That's between her and God. I know one thing I had in this pale. I know one thing I felt good. I know one thing I didn't care who was around. I didn't care what kind of birds was listening. I didn't care who was in the neighborhood. I didn't care who was cutting grass. But I let the devil know I was glad that the young lady made a profession of faith that she got in. Amen. And we need to make some noise when God does a work and moves. It says make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp and with the harp and the voice of a song. With trumpet sound of the cornets, make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. The Lord, hey, the Bible said, let the sea roll. Now, when you make a noise, now I don't know what some of these people are going to do about what the Bible says about string instruments. In a minute, I'm going to read a verse to you. In fact, I might as well just go ahead and turn over right now. We, we ain't going to get through all of it, so I'm going to hit the highlights. Psalms 81, 81 1. Hey, it's in the book, folk. 81 1. It says, Sing aloud unto God our strength, make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. All right, I'm going to hit the choir one time right here. When you get in the choir, you ought to sing out. You ought to make, hey, stay on tune the best you can, but sing out. We got nothing to be ashamed of. There's enough people in this choir on Sunday morning that it ought to blow the light fixtures out of this suit, out of this room. And sometimes I want to just get, Brother Rick, I want to get up there and say, sing out, amen. Let the people know we're rejoicing in the things of God. And the Bible says that we are to make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. Psalms 95.1 Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let's make some noise because of what the Lord hath done for us. I'm not talking about making a show. I'm not talking about getting the flesh in it. Because we can get the flesh in it. It wouldn't take very much to muster up the flesh. But let me just say tonight that it's not all time the flesh. When God moves in, He puts a shout and praises upon your lip. There's absolutely nothing wrong with standing up and praising the rock of our salvation. Amen. Praise His holy name. We need to praise Him, or we need, to make, we, we need to make some noise praising Him. When's the last time you praised Him? Now, I know you got me on the clock, but I'm trying to hurry. Psalms 149, verse number 3. Let Israel rejoice in Him. Oh, verse number 3, I'm sorry. Let them praise His name in dance. Uh-oh. Hey, that's in the King James Bible. Let them praise His name in dance. Let them sing praises unto Him with the timbrel and harp. Does anybody know what the, what a timbrel is? Now we're about to blow some of these independent Baptists clean out of the water. A timbrel is a tambourine. Oh my soul. Oh, uh, hey, can you bring a tambourine into an independent Baptist church? Why, sure you can. If you want to make a loud, joyful noise to the God and the rock of our salvation. I said a moment ago, you can beat the bottom of a tin tub. You can shake a tambourine. You can make a joyful noise and a loud noise to the rock of our salvation. It's in the book. 
The Bible speaks of the holy dance. The Bible speaks of a holy kiss to the brethren. That's the key word. You better keep it holy. Amen. Well, hey, we're going to make a joyful noise. We're going to make a loud noise in praising him. Look at Psalms 150. It says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. People come in church. Now, it don't bother them to talk in church. It don't bother them to get up and move around. It don't bother them to, to get up and go out. But my soul and some of the churches, don't you let out a holy grunt. You'll cause everybody in the congregation to turn around and look at you. Ain't that right? Somebody be sitting in the church and let, let out a big old amen and a big old praise the Lord. And boy, if they was to say hallelujah, my soul, if they was to jump up and shout, it'd scare half the people to death. But the Bible says that we are to praise the Lord in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent uh, greatness. Praise Him with the, with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery in the heart. Praise Him with the timbre, oh, and dance. Praise Him with the string instruments. And, or, oh, me, hmm. I've had some preachers say, we don't, we don't use no guitars in our church. Yeah, I mean, a man called me one time and asked me, he said, you, you got any singers in your church preacher? I said, yes, sir, we do. He said, uh, like for you, maybe y'all come down and sing for us uh, in revival. I said, well, we'd love that. We'd, I know our people would love that. Some of them would love to do that. And I said, uh, I said, uh, what, do you have a way to play a CD? Soundtrack. Oh, no, we don't use them in our church. We don't play no soundtracks. I said, okay. Well, I felt like I was when I, when we did, you know. I just, I felt, I almost, almost felt like I needed to get saved again. Then you soundtrack. I said, well, okay. I said, well, we got some fellows that plays the guitars and maybe they'll come say, oh, we don't have no, we don't allow no guitar playing in our church. I said, say what? Well, I thought I really need to get saved again then. I said, man, what kind of pastor is you? Let all that, Oh, heresy stuff into the church. And I got reading the scriptures. And it says, praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud timbrel, cymbals. Amen, Brother Roy. You ought to rattle them things every now and then up there. Praise him upon the high cymbals. Can I see the hands of everybody in here breathing? If you're breathing, would you please raise your hand? If you're not, if you don't raise your hand, you're in trouble. But it says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Look me! I say, if you're breathing tonight, you ought to make a loud noise for the Lord Jesus. I got news for them folk that don't allow string instruments into their church. I'm not a real smart person, but when I walk over and look in that piano, you know what I see that makes melody and music out of that thing? These strings in there, yes, they are. But it'd be a hard time to pick up that baby grand, put it in the yard, and try to strum it. So God made a way that He can make a, a men, give men knowledge enough to make an instrument they could put on their arms and make a loud noise for Jesus. Well, I just, you know, if they want to be wrong, they can. So we need to make a loud noise praising Him. We ought to make a loud noise praying too, by the way. We shouldn't be... Daniel wasn't ashamed to pray. You know why Daniel was written to the the degree that he's not to pray? Because some of them politicians was jealous. Over in the book of Daniel chapter 6, you read it, those governors and presidents. Daniel was getting a little recognition and boy, they didn't like that. Boy, it sounds like 20th, 21st century, doesn't it? But we see, oh, oh Daniel, they wrote a decree. Daniel, you can't pray. If you, if you pray, you, the old king decided the decree, we're going to throw you into the den of lions. Well, old Daniel said, it don't make no difference. I'm just going to make a noise anyhow. Hey, 
you, you say, preacher, how do you know he made a noise? Well, if he wasn't going to pray out loud, and if he wasn't going to pray loud and make a noise, there wouldn't been no need for him to open his windows. Hey, he went up there and threw the windows open, and he began to pray to the great God in heaven. And you know what? They went to the king, and they, the king, they couldn't find any accusation. They couldn't find anything wrong other than he was praying. I'll tell you right now, the only thing's wrong with you today is because you're praying. You're, you're in pretty good shape. But old Daniel prayed. And I'm going to give you one guess who had the night with a less amount of sleep. The old king. In fact, the king couldn't sleep. He went down and woke up Daniel. Because he was afraid what doesn't happen. We ought to make some noise praising. We ought to make some noise praying. There's a lot more we can say about that, but I'm hurting. We need to make some noise tonight by performing. And I'm not talking about entertaining, by the way. The Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 6, that he that hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Folks, there's no need for quitting. There's no need for stopping. There's no need for turning around. There's no reason to look back. Let me just say, the Bible says that we are to forget the things that are behind us and go forward toward the prize and the calling of the uh, and, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ought to make some noise while we're doing it. We ought to let this crowd know how we stand according to the King James Bible. We ought to let them know what we stand about concerning the contents of this Bible. If, I, if the Lord says it's wrong, it's wrong. If God says it's right, it's right. And we ought to voice our opinion when we're doing what God's called us to do and make some noise about it. Yeah. Amen. That's a good microphone. Yeah. Woo! Come on, to, hey, hey, that's the book. Oh, boy, here we go. You ought to make some noise. Not only praising, not only praying, not only performing, but you ought to make some noise paying. You say, well, I do that, preacher. Every Sunday I drop in 75 cents so it'll make a lot of racket when it goes in the offering plate. Not exactly what I'm talking about. And it's not all about money, by the way. There's a whole lot of other ways than the pay than it is just with your pocketbooks. There's a lot of people tonight think they're getting in heaven because of their pocketbook. It's not going to work. You're not going to get there through your pocketbook. You get there through this book right here and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ in that way only. But you can pay by the time and your talent and, of course, by your time. And we need to make some noise and pay. The Bible tells us when we make a vow unto the Lord that we're going to pay that vow one way or the other. Have you ever paid a vow the other way? You be careful what you promise God. Because He's going to require payment of that vow one way or the other. You may make some noise if when you pay the vows that you have made unto the Lord as you serve Him. I'm not talking about that we need to make a spectacle of ourselves. I'm not talking about we need to draw attention to ourselves. But we should not be ashamed of what we've done. This is the quietest world we're going to live in. And I believe everything in the church house ought to be done decently in order. But if God told you to do it, it's going to be decent and it's going to be orderly. Amen? If you... Hey, don't look at me like a calf looking at a new gate. Now, I know some of you ain't used to this. I know, I know some of you are not used to this hollering and carrying on. But, hey, you like it, don't you, brother? brother? Hey, he, he likes it. So, hey, at least I got one on my side tonight anyway. So, hey, if, if Josh likes it, praise God. Maybe the next step you get in on it, and you might start liking it. I better not see you at the ball game this coming high school football season, jumping up and hollering. And if you can't holler for Jesus, amen. Dorman's got a new scoreboard. Some of you can't wait to see it. I know. It's itching you up. I mean, I don't know what it cost, but it's supposed to be the biggest scoreboard jumbotron in the southeast. They say you have to go all the way to Texas to find a bigger one. Well, I ain't planning on looking for another one. But but, but it's, some of you can't wait to see the jumbotron at Cavalier Stadium. And I'll guarantee you, when they throw that sign up, make some noise. 
You'll have your towel, wait, you'll have your towel waving. You'll be hollering. How you know, preacher? Been there and done that. And I've been with some of you too, by the way. So see, I know you. I'm not just talking to... How about them Clemson Tigers? How about them South Carolina game cops? How about them Alabama Crimson Tide? How about the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses from all sin? <laughs> hey, we're not going to get anything out of them ball games, and I enjoy them. There's some enjoyment there. But when we begin to think about Jesus and what He's done for us, and the blood of the Lord Jesus and how He paid our sin debt, we ought to let people know that we're paying Him back with honor and praise and glory and honor as we make some noise for His glory. And then the Bible says we need to make some noise preaching. You say, well, preacher, you're doing that tonight. <laughs> hey, man, you help me back here, Rick Rack. I ain't wiped sweat but one time. I'm on a roll tonight. You say, preacher, well, I just don't believe in all that hard. I just think we ought to just sort of come in. We don't need to get nobody upset. You know, we got people that's got heart trouble. We got people that got nerve trouble. And we got people that's got lumbago and carbuncles and belt buckles and everything else, you know. And don't, we don't want to get them excited. We don't want to, we don't want to excite them too much in church. Sorry about that. But Isaiah chapter 58 and verse number 1 says this. Are you listening? If you don't believe, you turn your King James Bible. It says, cry aloud. Cry aloud. That's what it said. So God's given us permission to preach it loud. I'm telling you, some people today went to church and they went in the same way they come out. They got absolutely nothing. Don't raise their voice above a monotone. Afraid that they might strain something or hurt something. But they give it the full swing when they're on the golf course. Amen. Hey, boy, hey, we're just having church tonight. Hey, guess what we're going to do after we get through doing this? Oh, my soul done went over time. But, hey, we're going to give you a snow cone and some popcorn afterwards so that our soup and everything over. Now, you'll make some noise for that, amen. There'll some of you smack more than you. And a bigger noise you'll make back our smacking than you'll make in church sometimes. Oh, let me finish reading that verse. It says, cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. That's not there by accident, folks. Do you know what they use in the military to wake the soldiers up? Trumpet. Called it's loud. Sometimes the preacher's got to get loud to wake some people up. It's in the church. I was in Bible college over at Tabernacle, and they told this to be true, and I don't know where it was or not, but wouldn't doubt it. We said I was in church service one night, and this old boy was sitting there asleep, and his buddy was sitting right beside him, and he done dozed off three or four times. Said the preacher was preaching, of course he wasn't loud, and he probably, probably was just a little bit bored. You ever been one of them? Not, not around here, please tell me, not around here, please. Don't say, yeah, this morning, preacher. No, I hope not. But they sitting there, and he's just sort of monotone. He probably was bored. He's probably was dozing off, wanting to go eat. And he's kept just dozing off. His buddy was sitting beside him. He, 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 got him, he called him when he had a pretty deep sleep. He punched his buddy on the side and said, Hey, he said, if you're dismissing prayer. <laughs> that old boy jumped up and started praying right in the middle of the church. <laughs> now, he needed to be woke up. And I'm going to confess to you tonight. There's been times I've seen you doze off a little bit. <laughs> yes, I have. 
If I had to call names, I could. And I've had to get a little loud to wake you up. But the Bible says that we are to cry loud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. People want to come into church today and tell, wants the preacher to tell them how good they are. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, every one of us is as sorry as sorry can be. I'm talking about from the pulpit all the way through the back door, every one of us is sorry as we can be. Thank God for the grace of God. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God that He makes, <laughs> woo! Thank God He makes us a new creature in Christ Jesus. Thank God the old man is dead. Thank God we got something to shout about. We got something to holler about. We got a reason tonight to make some noise. And we ought to just praise Him and thank Him for all the things He's done for us. Let's stand and we'll be dismissed to the word of prayer. Let's stand, please.